Farm broadcasters are in the know wherever you go in America. It almost sounds like a commercial for radio. It does. Be in the know wherever you go, listen to a farm broadcaster. A fellow like Alan Watts, WKDZ, Kate is Kentucky, a great agricultural area served by Alan. And in fact, if I'm not mistaken, you're heard across the state of Kentucky now. Yes, sir, we are. We launched the Your Ag Edge Network in 2020, right before COVID-19 hit. So what a time to do that, right? <laughs> Well, your ag industry, of course, has been affected by COVID, uh, I would imagine, in some instances. Talk a little bit about reflecting back on last year. What were some of the impacts uh, as far as your producers were concerned? Probably maybe the beef cattle industry was hit pretty hard. When this initially started, Max and Mike, we, uh, a lot of our farmers was like, are we going to be able to continue? Are we going to be able to have a crop? Kentucky was declared agriculture an essential service. So farming and agriculture continued maybe our agriculture business has continued with all the restrictions in place and some of our farmers uh, beef cattle farmers i mean it, the demand for beef cattle in kentucky has been tremendous grain prices grain crops did well in western kentucky eastern kentucky they had somewhat dry conditions but uh, grain farmers have done well also this year so it's been kind of an unusual year and produce farmers i've talked to produce farmers who sold more produce off the farm this year than they've ever sold in the past. For some in that agritourism business, and I would imagine there were some in your state, for example, around Louisville, who were really able to take advantage of being in close proximity with the consumers to, to sell produce to them. Absolutely. I have a story on my travel to Bluegrass next week with a gentleman who, Joel Wilson from Belaski County, he said his business, they have a, they have a strawberry stand in the, in the spring, and he said, our business was so strong at one time, I stood out in the middle of Highway 80 and directed traffic in there from all day long. He said, I stood out there from nine o'clock in the morning till three o'clock in the afternoon, directing traffic in and out. I had others tell me that traffic control, fortunately, was one of the nice things they, they had to deal with. But do you, th do you think they can count on that for the next season ahead? Or was that a one-year aberration for these folks? You know, Max, I've talked to Commissioner Ron Quarles, which I know you guys have talked to Commissioner Quarles as well. He says he thinks this has gotten a reunion, maybe a new birth of agriculture, a new appreciation for agriculture across the state because people have learned that they can go to the farm and get their fresh produce and don't have to get it worried about the supply chain working or not working. They get it direct from the farm and people really seem to love that. So hopefully this will continue and make farmers and farm markets and things of that nature even better. Alan, I kind of want to jump in there and build on that. We've heard a lot throughout the Corn Belt of beef cattle producers being able to market directly to the consumers, but then we kind of got hung up with a, a lack of, uh, of processing space. What have you heard down there in Kentucky? We're having the same problem here, Mike. In fact, uh, Commissioner Quarles used some of the CARES money. He worked with Governor Bashir in Kentucky to use some, some CARES money to allow small producers or small custom meat packers across the state to expand their operations to handle more but people farmers will tell me say I've gotten calls from consumers who say can I buy can I buy a steer or can I buy can I buy meat from you and he said yes but the first question is do you have a processing date he said if you don't have a processing date come back and see me in about a year so it's been about a year wait man that's that seems to be the story across the country and for our viewers who are scattered across the country not all that familiar with western kentucky you've got produce you've got corn and beans you've got beef you've got poultry i mean you guys really run the gamut what's the general sense of producers that you talk to out there are we optimistic going into 2021 they are optimistic going into 2021 and of course you know in the western part of the state we're big corn tobacco uh, especially dark fire tobacco and then air cured tobacco as well and then soybeans wheat and then central and eastern kentucky are big on livestock i think all producers i've talked to are pretty excited about what 2021 could hold for them and uh, maybe you know 2020 turned out to be a year they thought would be a bad year really turned out to be a good year and they're looking forward to 2021. of course here's the last couple of weeks with grain market prices where they've been every farmer i've talked to have to catch them between loads to the loads to the to the elevator because yeah, you know, I told me the other day, he said, if I didn't have it contracted, I'm selling it. The lines, we noticed the truck lines were fairly yeah. long at some of the elevators, too. One quick question uh, about the yeah. Louisville Farm Show. What do you think? That, that always takes place the middle part of February, but they back the date up to March 31st. Is it likely to still be held? Max, yeah, that's a good question. I talked to David Beck, who's the president and CEO of the Kentucky Expo Center and Kentucky Venues, and he said, you know, we're going to plan it as if it's going to happen. 
He said, we're hoping COVID numbers and the vaccine will get out there and get people more comfortable and the COVID numbers will go down about that time. But he said, we're going to plan as if it's going to happen. He said, we may have to cancel it at the last minute. But he says that right now, it's we're, we're, we're full speed ahead. Makes you wonder if they would add tents outside or something. You know, it's going to be six weeks later. Temperatures would be a little bit warmer and you wouldn't have that elbow to elbow crowd inside the, the facility. That generally is the case in mid-February. You know, they, the Kentucky Exposition Center figured out ways to do things last year pretty safely. They did the Kentucky State Fair in August and they did it. It was very socially distanced. Only exhibitors, everybody wore a mask, even the exhibitors, which was kind of different to go to, but uh, very quiet. They also did the North American with the exhibitors only. And uh, that Mr. Beck told me, he said, you know, well, we think we've figured out how to do these kind of things. He said, hopefully we can get a crowd in here and keep them far apart as much as we can and have the farm machinery show. So people, so many people depend on the farm machinery show and the tractor pull every year just to, for that spring experience or that winter experience. Alan, it's always a treat to talk to you. We sure appreciate it. Uh, we'll see you along the way. Take care. That's good, Mike and Max. Thank you guys. Alan Watts, WKDZ, KDIVS Kentucky has a big listening audience, not only the western side of the state, but right. all across the state. That farm machinery show, you know, that's usually around Valentine's Day. Yes. No excuse for the guys this year. That's right. You <laughs> got to plan something else. Yeah, take care of that at home. We'll have more coming up on this week in agribusiness. Stay with us here.